Third, Jake Smith batting cleanup. Connor McKinney, fifth. Jonathan Blake hitting sixth. Julio Barrera, new face, batting seventh. Romeo Sanchez hitting eighth. And batting ninth is Josh Fernandez. We'll get to the starting lineup or starting defense here for Santa Cruz in just a moment as Liam Field Ropley is on the mound. Strike one here to Ashton Lewis. In left field is Avira Brazerecki. Center is Hunter Denworth. Right fielder is Roman Duran. Quick two strikes here to Lewis. You win Turvey at third, Elliot Smith at short. Nathan Dodrill at second. Casper is at first. Behind the dish is Anthony Skinner. And on the bump is the righty Liam Field Rapley. Santa Cruz, they are going to be fully rested as far as pitching wise as the 0-2 pitch is a wave and a miss and another one will bite the dust. So Lewis getting the start here in this game, had the game off yesterday. 
Definitely needed him for his on-base expertise. And with one away, here is Ryan Valdivia dropping from the leadoff spot to the number two spots. Don't want to miss down upstairs. Ball one. Well, it was a once and nothing pitcher's duel, which Santa Cruz was able to shut out Sierra Madre. Tough team to shut out, considering a team that scores runs pretty easily. It's the 1 1. Gets down by Valdivia. On and two. Already three strikeouts. Four batters that have come up to the plate. And Valdivia is going to pop this one up. Matt Casper in foul territory. Watugui. Well, if we had winners that consisted of Sierra Madre and Long Beach yesterday, we would have been looking at... We, we would be playing the championship game right about now. But fighting spirits by Santa Cruz and Kauai is what enforces these early games. Ground ball past the diving U win. Turvey down the third baseline. Rounding first and looking for a double is Andrew Cooper. And it's Sierra Madre on the board first with their first base hit of the game. Perfectly placed ground ball that ends up going down the line. That's always a tough thing to do as far as playing corner infield. Do you play on a, in a defense that hugs the line or do you want to play a defense that covers more of the gap? See Jake Smith now at the plate. That's going to get by Skinner and that will allow a free bag there for Cooper. Ball one. Probably 1-0, and that'll miss outside. Jake Smith had a chance to be the number three hitter last night. Just could not handle the velo that Skinner had. That's going to keep Cooper there at third. Three and O oh now the count. And Jake Smith. 0 for 2, a hit by pitch, and a K. As a 3-0, going to lay off of that one. It results in a two-out walk here for Smith, and it'll be ducks at the corners for Connor McKinney. So with adding Lewis to the lineup, essentially everybody gets bumped down a spot. Lewis been a good leadoff bat for Sierra Madre. The 2 7 will be pinch running here for Jake Smith as he is the pitcher. So Nick Adams pinch running for Jake Smith. Skinner's going to handle that one low and away. Ball one. See Ropley falling behind two hitters. I mean, he was jumping ahead against Lewis and Valdivia, but when it came down to getting the last out of the inning, now he's just falling behind to three and four hitters. So three and oh now, back to back three O's. And this time able to. Locate that pitch in the inner half of the plate to have that work in this count back. But if you're McKinney, now you've got to 
pretty comfortable hitter's count. As there goes a runner, ground ball up the middle, and Smith will go the short way and go to first. So no runs, one hits, no errors, and two runners left on base at the end of one. Still no score. Top second. And Jake Smith taking the mound again after a flawless first inning. We'll go up against Matt Casper, Nathan Dodrell, and you win Turvey in that order. One strike pitch. Casper's going to lift this one and will be out of play. Long strike number two. Looking at the grand stands here for Santa Cruz. I mean, only seeing three fans taking this one in, but when you look deeper into the park, ground ball over to second, vacuumed by Fernandez. Everyone underneath the shade, underneath the trees, right behind the Santa Cruz dugout, whole lot of Foldable chairs, lawn chairs, sitting on the tables over here behind the dugout. And you have the opposites here for Sierra Madre. One away, bringing up Nathan Dodrell, 0 and 1. Easy ups in the grandstand. And foldable chairs right next to the dugouts. As Hunter Denworth led things off, Elliot Smith. Anthony Skinner, third. Matt Casper was the cleanup hitter. Nathan Dodrill hitting number five. Ewan Turvey in the on deck circle. Roman Duran hitting seventh. Avir Brazereke hitting eighth. And batting ninth is Liam Fields Ropley. Give you the starting defense here for Sierra Madre right after the 1 1. Bouncer going to short as McKinney will pick that one up. Two away. So Ryan Valdivia at left, Andrew Cooper in center, Ashton Lewis playing in right. Julio Barrera playing at third, Connor McKinney at short, Josh Fernandez at second, Romeo Sanchez is on first, behind the dishes, Jonathan Blake, and it's the righty, Jake Smith. Very warm conditions here this Sunday afternoon. That'll be right at the knees to Turvey 0 and 1. 93 degrees at first pitch. 1593 is hot. Well, first pitch of what should be a 3 o'clock first pitch time for the championship game. 98 degrees here from West Covina. 98. Just to add on to the playing field with a high, high intensity game. The heat. The good thing is it's not a turf field. If it's a turf field, it's certainly going to feel like 100 plus with the Sun, radiation bouncing off of the turf as the one-two pitch getting that one by you win Turvey and another one will bite the dust. So strikeout number three here for Jake Smith. Six batters up, six batters down. So another flawless inning there for Jake Smith as they will drop a bunt. Ropley smoothly tossing over to first in time to retire Jonathan Blake. One, three, one gone. Would have liked to see that bunt further down the third baseline as opposed to there closer to the mound. And with one away here is Julio Barrera. First look at Barrera. What's the store here for this AB ball one? Well, he's taking over at third here in this game. And this will be an arm for the rotation. Ground ball over to Smith, and Smith 
Let's throw a little outside, but Casper able to use his length to record out number two. So a very quick out number one and out number two. And here is Romeo Sanchez. Sanchez attacking the first offering. No results but a strike. A little slight breeze going through Walmart Park. Bouncer up the middle. Nothing that Dodra or Smith can do about that one. Could have resulted in a two out single for Sanchez. That'll allow Josh Fernandez to swing the bat with a runner on. Josh Fernandez getting a start here in this game, made an appearance last night against Santa Cruz. Coming in in a big game. In a do or die situation and any batter for both of these clubs can come up big at any given moment, though down to first. Be careful with Anthony Skinner, who is behind the dish, not afraid to cock back and fire to any bag. He's 1-1, one, one, lifted, and no play. On the one, two, off the outside edge. Two and two. And gotta love the animated bunch that Santa Cruz brings to this tournament. They make a whole lot of noise coming from their respective dugouts. It's not noise towards the other team, but it's just noise to, towards their own teammates. So nothing in that matter. You know, every team has their own ways of cheering for each other. That's the 2-2, slow roller. Ropley on the backhanded play, and he'll come up with the out himself. So they get a base hit with two outs, but leave him stranded at the end of two. Goose eggs on the board. Top of the third inning as we may be on the way of seeing another pitcher's duel and what a series this semifinals has turned into. We'll have seven, eight, and nine here for Santa Cruz. Well, we saw Smith open up the game yesterday. I beg your pardon, it was actually Andrew Cooper, my bad. Cooper opened up the game. Cooper was matching the exact same energy as Anthony Skinner, who's now behind the plates, as here's a drive over to left field for a hit, and that's the first hit for Santa Cruz in two innings. So they're not able to get one in the inner half of the plates with Avir Brezrecki coming up to the plate who essentially came up with the save to be able to finish up the game. So Jesse Fulkerson will be running here for Duran. That's a foul ball here for Brazier Reke. He has the right idea, though. Lefty-righty matchup here for Brazier Reke. 
seeing that the third baseline is open. Try, that's exactly where he's trying to hit. The one strike pitch there goes Fulkerson as the ground ball through the right side. Fulkerson was already on the move and trying to go to third and the throw goes to third. And he'll beat it out. Just a perfectly executed hit and run for Santa Cruz. But would have liked to see Josh Fernandez go Go after the ball as opposed to covering the bag. I mean, in a situation like that with a lefty hitter, it's got to be Connor McKinney that's covering the bag, then allowing Fernandez to cover the gap. And especially in a situation like that with a bouncer going through the right side, that would have allowed Fernandez to get an out. At least a much higher possibility of an out. This fields roughly. Taking that one, ball one. Two singles here in this inning for Santa Cruz was gone in a bit of a slower start. This is going to be a bunt, and here is a safety squeeze. One run will come in to score, and Santa Cruz will be on the board first. And no need to always be coming for the big base hits. So one out, a runner on second. Here is Hunter Denworth, who was put away very quickly on three pitches. Definitely gonna have to be making a whole lot of adjustments there at the dish. Looking to at least make some contact this time around. As he goes after a breaking ball. And good work behind the plate there for Blake. Bodying up on the pitch, and the count's going to go two strikes. Chasing after the off speed. You could really get him with something off of the plate. Do not give him a strike here is my biggest suggestion for Smith as the two-strike pitch. Gets that one by Denworth, and another one will bite the dust. So four Ks through two and two-thirds innings for Jake Smith. Now he'll have to go up against Elliot Smith. Let's try to go in after one. He was a little early on that pitch. Well, the most pitches we have seen Smith toss is 11, and he's already sitting at 10 with just this inning alone. Able to get that one at the knees. Two strikes. He's right now been sitting at about 10, 11 pitches each of these first two innings. Looking to stay just as efficient. As a two strike pitch and in there for a strike three call. And another one bites the dust on Buenos Dias. When I started this E, when it looks as they are able to capitalize the lead. Santa Cruz one, Sierra Madre nothing. Bottom of the third inning, and it's the top half of the lineup for Sierra Madre. With Lewis, Valdivia, and Cooper. And the count's gonna go one ball and a strike. So Liam Fields Ropley working with that one run cushion. And at the rate that this game is going, that one run could be enough. Just like the one run was enough for Santa Cruz. It's not every day that you experience back-to-back -back pitchers' duels. But already experiencing it there. One, two pitch. What a nasty pitch getting Lewis guessing. And another one bites the dust. Go, go, go. 
So you have the difference between two pitchers, a contact pitcher and a strikeout pitcher, as that is K number two and both coming from Ashton Lewis. Valdivia up on the count. One ball. Valdivia was able to put the ball in play, but fouled out. 2-0. Oh. Boy, Sierra Madre with this scoring drought. Just haven't been able to get anybody to come across the plate. And they've gotten their fair share of base runners. Last night, not a whole lot with Skinner on the mound. 3-1. And what makes Skinner very successful is the way he's able to mix his pitches. And of course, that is the art of pitching. Full counts. Can you mix your pitches up well? And can you hit your spots, hit your locations? And throw constant strikes. As a payoff pitch, ground ball up the middle, past Elliott Smith. So that'll be the third hit of the game for Sierra Madre, and they have collected a hit in these first two, or first three. Hey, Valdivia on. It's, my, it's Andrew Cooper. Cooper with that big swing. He's gonna need to find a way to shorten up. There goes the runner. Throw down a second. A little on the higher side, but at the same time, give the credit to Valdivia for getting a great jump. Speedy Gonzalez Valdivia able to get into scoring position. They have been able to do that two out of the three innings in this game. 1-1, one, one, and Cooper going to pop this one up. It's a foul territory, and it ends up being Ropley who makes the play. Got to communicate that a little better to Anthony Skinner. So a two away, here is Jake Smith. Pitcher versus pitcher action. Stays up. Already a total of three runners left on base here for Sierra Madre. Uh, Smith getting under another one, going over this one. A long way, drops in for a hit. Duran unable to make the play, rounding third to come in to score is Ryan Valdivia and Sierra Madre able to even up the score in the bottom of the third. So Jake Smith able to make it into a brand new game on the two out RBI single. Looks like time is gonna be called. They're going to need a, pit, a courtesy runner for the pitcher. Looks like Adams will be coming back out to run for Smith. We'll see if down the line in this game, Adams will have a responsibility much bigger than pinch running. I mean, it's already a pretty big responsibility. I mean, base running is not an easy thing. And when you have two outs, it does make it easy. You go, you go when the ball is put into play, no matter what. Anything more than that, then you got to pay attention to your base coaches and see if it's okay to take another bag after taking one. Now a 
hitter's count to McKinney. As he will sky this one to straightaway center field. Taking a couple steps in, Hunter Denworth to stop the bleeding. So one run, two hits, no errors, and one runner left on base. It's Sierra Maje able to make it into a new game in the third. So Sierra Madre able to even up the score. As they will have three, four, and five part of the lineup here for Santa Cruz. It'll be Skinner, Casper, and Dodro. And this matchup for these two teams continues to be neck and neck when you think that Santa Cruz can come away with the win with taking the lead. Then you see Sierra Madre that's able to even up the score. And now this has just turned into anybody's ball game. As the 1-1, Skinner popping this one up into the sunny skies. One and two. Two pitch and Skinner with a fly ball, a can of corn to center. And Andrew Cooper will make the grab one away. So, with one away, here comes Matt Casper. One thing that's always been a curiosity of mine when it comes down to these tournaments with having a lot of out of town opponents. As Casper does go around 0-1. I mean, it was something that, that I heard about. I mean, some of the parents thinking, okay, well, it's great that we have been extended to the championship game. We're gonna have to make some modifications to our flights. How do you know which flight to, book when it comes down to these tournaments. Maybe you just book something the night of the day of the championship game, then there's always that possibility of, well, what if we get eliminated early? Well, we're just hanging out here and we could be trying to get home as early as possible, but sometimes it's not always the option, having to stick it out all the way to the end of the day of championship game as Casper goes after an off-speed pitch and another one bites the dust. So six Ks through three and two thirds and it's Nathan Dodrill. Dodrill's gonna leave that one way high. Ball one. Jeffrey Vognoy is taking over at second for Sierra Madre. Could definitely expect Vognoy to take over Josh Fernandez's spot in the lineup. Fouled off there for Dodrill, one and two. Already hearing, already hearing Long Beach taking hacks in the batting cages. Well, the luxury, we'll talk about it in the, pre, in the next inning. Ground ball to short. McKinney's throw will be chest high. So one, two, three inning here for Sierra Madre. And that's another clean sheet for Jake Smith. 1-1 one, one the score. Bottom of the fourth inning. We'll have hitters six, seven, and eight here for Sierra Madre. And it continues to be Ropley still on the mound and continues to be just as dominant as he was in the first inning. 
Jonathan Blake grounded back to the pitcher, and that's going to be a miss upstairs. Two and one, the counts. So the one and only run that has come in to score for Sierra Madre in the third and for Santa Cruz in the third. Ground ball rolling over to second as Turvey's going to pick that one up and retire him 5-3. They'll retire the leadoff batter, and here is Julio Barrera. First A-B, bouncer over to short. I mean, I think the biggest thing that Coach Varnoy was talking about like before the game with having Barrera joining the team was a little late to the fiesta, to the party. And it's an additional arm that Sierra Madre could definitely use. I mean, they did not use very many arms last night. I mean, to only use Cooper, Barrier, and Smith. You're in pretty good standings with pitching. And pitching is what's going to lead you to the championship game. Here's a chopper. That's going to go foul. We're just hoping that that ball had enough spin to stay fair. You got it, JB. We get to see Sierra Madre take the lead in this game. Two teams very evenly match. And talks to the umpires in game one this morning of Kauai and Long Beach Hardwell. And they were talking about how last year in championship game day, in championship day, they only played one game, of course, the championship game. But how about it this year? Having seen some clubs that refused to stop fighting until the very end. Kauai fighting it until Long Beach was down to their last out. Being able to get them to play an additional game here on championship day. And same case here for Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz. And boy, this is a team with a whole lot of fights, a lot of talented players. I mean, one thing that has been concerning though for Santa Cruz, when they go up big, they start to Start to play a little flat-footed and allow the opposition to come back into the game as Barrera is going to drive one to right field, lined straight to Duran's glove, two gone. So Sanchez, responsible of one of the four hits on the board here for Sierra Madre. Jeffrey Vaudenoy is on deck should Sanchez get on. one -o. Catching that outer half of the plate, one and one, the count. So Long Beach, they got their job done this morning and they get a little bit of a break, able to take a lunch break and Get back into hitting the cages and getting physically and mentally prepared for whoever their opponent is. So at least they have a break. Whereas whoever the winner is in this one, you're going straight into the championship game. 30 minutes after this game. Championship game, first pitch. So sometimes that could be a plus. Sometimes it could be a negative. Full count. Again, that same argument we have been discussing all tournaments long. Would you rather be the resting team or would you rather be the team that's constantly working? So would you rather be like Long Beach, who is resting right now, waiting for their opponent, or would you rather be Santa Cruz or Sierra Madre, who is playing the game right now and will be playing a second straight game as the 2-2, missing outside, ball four to Sanchez. Pretty disciplined A-B there for Sanchez, and now it'll be 
Jeffrey Vodnoy, who's hitting for Josh Fernandez. So Varnoy coming off of the bench in this game. Fernandez got the initial start. Fernandez with a slow roller back to the pitcher as well. As he'll take that off speed pitch in the outer edge. Oh and one. Missing low, getting by Skinner. That's gonna allow Sanchez to take second. Passed ball here for Skinner. Nobody better, one, two. So now you have the go-ahead run in scoring position. And now has to get a pitch to drive. See if Ropley even gives him a pitch to drive. As the one, one, leaving that one outside, two and one. Very quick two and one, and Vodnoy hacking away at that one, two and two now. They have had four runners left on base here for Sierra Madre. Trying to reduce that number a little high would be scary as that's a wild pitch to Ropley, allowing Sanchez to advance to third. So now a little more pressure here to Skinner, to Ropley, Skinner, He's gonna have to practice on his blocks. And as far as Ropley is concerned, can make him second guess which pitches that he could deliver here to put Vadnoi away. Bouncer up the middle. There is Smith. Can Vadnoi beat it out? And no. Ends up being a 6-3 put out very quick for Elliott Smith. And just moments away from coming up with the go-ahead run. Top of the fifth inning, just one base away for Sierra Madre to be able to collect the first lead of the game. That's a ball there for Ewan Turvey. Gonna look at the bottom half of the order here for Sierra Madre as the first pitch, or the very next pitch. It's called strike one and one. To both managers and Spencer Vodnoy and Brad Smith as there's a drive over to right field and that's going to get to the right field wall. Lewis picks that one up and it will be Turvey rounding first and going for extra bases. So both managers here in this matchup going with their, their top available guns. It is it's turned into another close game. I mean, you gotta love the close games like this than slaughter fest. Definitely makes you enjoy every ounce and enjoy every moment of the game. So it looks like Jesse Fulkerson is going to be pinch hitting for Duran, staying in the game. Leave that one off of the plate, ball one. Wilkerson with the possibility of showing bunt, why not get the go-ahead run on third? Yes, everyone always looks for the big hits and with more reason, that will allow Turvey to get to third on a wild pitch. Wild pitch, haters count. Two and two. So the 
go ahead, run, just 90 feet away. Show and Bunt does stab at it, does offer. Here comes the attempt and the tying, or the go ahead run comes in to score. You win, Turvey. So Santa Cruz on top, two to one. Smith's 2-2, two -two. gets that one by Fulkerson, and another one bites the dust. So with one dead, here is Avir Brazereke. Painting that outer half of the plate. How did we get here? Well, Sierra Madre, first matchup, they had Rockland, California, which was a high scoring game. It was 16 to 10 in favor of Sierra Madre, which dropped Rockland to the losing bracket and advanced Sierra Madre to the next round in game seven, which was West Covina and Sierra Madre, which was a close game, which was a seven to six game, which then dropped they dropped West Covina down to the losing bracket with Brazereke going down on strikes. Then with that one, they got matched up with Santa Cruz. Who Santa Cruz, yes, with one loss under their, under their belts, they were able to play, get matched up with Sierra Madre. Good looking breaking ball. Recall strike there to, to Ropley. But then it would be Santa Cruz that would get the shutout win last night and enforce this game. Bouncer right there on the left side as Barrera throws it offline. That allows Fields Ropley to advance to second. That'll be an E5. That's a play. That's a play that definitely ends the inning. As Lions is pinch running here for Fields Ropley as the courtesy runner as Hunter Denworth will get a chance to swing the bat here with a runner on second. Pitch miss upstairs. So Santa Cruz almost, and I mean absolutely almost, losing against Elma Washington. Came down to the tying run and the game winning run get being on base in scoring position. As Denworth bounces one and tosses over to first and retires Denworth. So both teams came close, but it's a 2-1 lead on a wild pitch for you in Turvey. So bottom five, and Santa Cruz able to recollect the lead. We'll go back to the top where we originally started with Lewis, Valdivia, and Cooper. As Lions field, Ropley that is on the mound. And Santa Cruz making some changes from the defensive lineup. So Skinner and Turvey switching places. So now it's Turvey who is behind the dish and Skinner is playing at third. As a 2-0 pitch, and this one is skies to deep center field. This one has a shot, and that one is off of the center field wall. So Lewis making the adjustments here, going from a pair of Ks to a double. Now the big question is, 
And Sierra Madre cash him in, but it's Ryan Valdivia. Start Valdivia off with a pitch upstairs, ball one. So we're talking about how Santa Cruz got here, almost losing against Alma Washington, 13 to 12. They played against Long Beach, which resulted in a final of eight to three. That was the Friday night game, which dropped Santa Cruz down to the losing brackets as there's a grounder over to first as Casper will allow Lewis to advance to third on a three unassisted to put Valdivia away. So Santa Cruz would have to play against Rialto and that was a game that ended in a 15-5 game in five innings. Maybe better said four. Maybe even three since not a single out was recorded. So with that win, that brought Santa Cruz here to win last night and the game before the championship game. It's a good spot there for Cooper laying off of it. And championship game will start 30 minutes after this one. Here's a bouncer as that's going to get by the new third baseman, Skinner. And now Lewis able to come in to score, make it into another even game. Brad Smith coming to the mound, and could this be it for Fields Ropley? So it would be one down, a runner in scoring position for Jake Smith. Looks like Smith will be sticking around in the game. And will not be, or will definitely still stay pitching. So Brad Smith's going to continue on with his confidence here with Fields Ropley. So here we go, runner in scoring position, one away, Jake Smith. Going to try to help out his own cause. The go-ahead run in scoring position. Missing upstairs, ball one. Slight breeze been blowing through Walmarado Park here in West Covina, California. The 1-0 missing outside. Two balls and no strikes. Here's the 2-0, and Smith getting under this one, straight away center, and another can of corn, and caught there for Hunter Denworth. So that'll be Connor McKinney. He pitched that first game, the first one against, first one against Rockland, California. And since then he has not been able to, hasn't been able to pitch. There's one strike pitch and back to back strikes. We'll see, maybe, just maybe they're holding them back, hold them on, holding them off for the very next game. Should there be a next game? 
As McKinney skying one over to right center field, who's going to make the grab? And it's the captain, Hunter Denworth, with the grab. So one out, one out RBI single for Andrew Cooper ends up cashing in Ashton Lewis to make it back to a 2-2 game. Top six, we've seen two lead changes in this game. At this point, it's gonna come down to who wants it more. The count's gonna go even up at one ball and a strike. And really at this point, it's really hard to tell who's going to be that team who's going to come up on top as they have been so evenly matched. Pitching aspect, we saw 28 strikeouts total for both squads. And now today, exact same thing. Not so many strikeout numbers, not as much strikeout numbers, but I mean, just with the score, just not a whole lot of hits. Yeah, base runners are getting on, but leaving them stranded. The defense is fundamentally sound. There's the 2-2 two -two pitch. And Smith will lay off of that one. Full count. Adams warming up in the pen as a payoff pitch. A swing and a miss there. And another one will bite the dust. So nine strikeouts through five and a third, and here is Anthony Skinner. This is a third time through the Santa Cruz lineup. Skinner, he's gonna get under one deep left field, right at the warning track, and not a worry in the world for Valdivia. Just missing that extra scoop of protein in the protein shake this morning. And with two away, here is Matt Casper. That was a long out. It seemed like that ball just kept carrying. It also just has some nice hang time to it. But just did not have the distance there for Skinner. Couldn't get any help from the breeze. Just not enough of a breeze. Two strike pitch coming up here from Smith and here it comes. Caps, Casper will lay off of that one, one and two. One, two pitch. Casper just flicking one on the right side. Now here's a guy that is definitely capable with some slugging numbers. That's why you're seeing him hit fourth in this lineup. Good slugging, good power. Just hasn't had anything to handle here in this at bat except for the, sh the two strikes he has. Two two. And how about Casper fighting off a couple of these pitches? Right about now, this is when it starts to turn into a checker match. What strategic move do you make if you're Coach Smith or Coach Vodnoy? As one move can change the game as a 2-2 pitch, fanned and missed for Matt Casper, and another one bites the dust. So six innings official here for Jake Smith. He has 10 Ks. So we go to the bottom of the six.
So bottom six. And Sierra Madre with an opportunity to break this tie. The one strike pitch, and there's a drive over to left field, and that will one hop the left field wall. Jonathan Blake on the way to come up with a leadoff double and setting the tables up for Julio Barrera. That's exactly how the fifth inning went down, starting to look like deja vu all over again. Can you say again, again? So Brad Smith on the mound. That's gonna be it for Field Ropley as he heads over to left field and not wanting to risk this one. So a new arm coming to the mound here for Santa Cruz. The Southpaw, Avier Brazereke. We'll have nobody gone, have to deal with Barrera at the plate. Had a screaming line drive over to right field that ended up inside of the glove as Barrera trying to go with that same exact direction. Something over on the right side. So a good performance here on the mound here for Liam Field Ropley, who was just missing the run support. There's the one strike pitch and Barrera, same exact result. Strike two. So the final numbers here for Liam Field roughly five innings, two Ks, a walk, seven hits, and two earned runs. So we'll see how good Santa Cruz pitching is. I mean, they have already been good all tournaments long, but in the big stage here, the looping curve, a strike three call, and another one bites the dust on Buenos Dias. Buenas tardes y buenas noches. Senor Julio Barrera. Well, Barrera, he was going after the first two, but then when it came down to the off speed, just could not handle it, handle it there. And now we'll see Lucas Villalobos, who's going to be hitting for Romeo Sanchez. A little bit of a Shocking choice there for Coach Varnoy with Sanchez one for one with a single and a walk. Love a guy that can get on base in that manner who has been getting on base consistently. Villalobos, the outer half of the play, toe and one. Brazereke, he has been good in these big, these big leverage situations. There's a one strike pitch via Lobos. He got a pitch to hit and could not make any sort of contacts. Two strikes. And this inning will dictate if it'll be a save situation for Sierra Madre or they'll be battling it out to give themselves opportunity in the bottom of the seventh. Villa Lobos lining out, hopped below the glove of Elliot Smith. Coming in to score is Jonathan Blake. 
And that's the way the go-ahead run scores. Fielding ground balls 101. Does not matter what the field conditions are. Sandy or hard clay, cement, gotta stay low. Get in front, stay low, then throw. And again, Via Lobos coming in clutch and getting the RBI single. And this is a guy you love off the bench, almost like a Jason Giambi type of player. Comes off of the bench. Comes up with the big hits. And turning to, as they call, the Panda. So they're able to collect the lead for the first time today. They still have an opportunity to increase this lead for Jeffrey Vodnoy in the box. So that run will be charged to field Ropley. And that's a good pitch. 0 oh and 1 here to Vodnoy. Oh 0 1. I'm not only able to get a piece of it, but along with the mask of the backstop. Two strikes on his count. So in the top of the seventh inning, we'll see Dodrell, Turvey, and Fulkerson, possibly even Duran. Time's going to be called here for Varnoy. Vodnoy, he is down for the count. Why not? Try to call for some time, take a deep breath, try to throw Bra Brazereke's timing off. That's a two strike pitch. A little too high. One and two. Again, winner of this one will punch their ticket to the championship game. And it is Long Beach Hartwell who is waiting for their opponent. They've been taking hacks in the cages, waiting to see who will we play against. Either way, whoever their next opponent is, it's going to be a great game. I mean, Santa Cruz, they've already played against them. They'll be looking to avenge their defeat. And Sierra Madre, they have not played against Long Beach. It's nice to have a little bit of that type of matchup where it's two clubs not familiar with each other in the sense that, hey, this is the first time I'm gonna play against you. I do not know what to expect. Or would you rather have the revenge game? Hey, we're on a mission. We want to beat you guys this time around in the big stage. And of course, to each their own. Always liking the first matchup in a tournament. Hey, we haven't met in the tournament. Kind of getting first eyes on each other. And it's one of those, hey, we won because we had no, we had no intel on you guys as far as playing against you guys. And we won with raw talent. One, two. And Vardanoi locked in for this AB. Got it, two, five. Keep 
Fallon off four. Pitch number eight for this at bat is coming up. Would you like to see guys that are locked in and looking for a way to get on base? And continues. That's Sanchez that is running over there at first for Villa Lobos. Villa Lobos was just there to get on base for as a pinch hitter. There's a one-two pitch, and Vardnoy once again. Another foul ball. Make that five foul balls, and we'll see a pitch number nine. We'll try again, here is the one, two. Missing upstairs. Ball two. So this will extend to a pitch number 10 of the at bat. Who's gonna win it at this point? Just trying to see who's going to win this particular AB. That's a two, two pitch and Vardnoy fouling off pitch number 10. Looking like Brazereke continues to give that same exact location. I'm hoping it's a location he can put Wadnoy away. Brazereke trying, or Wadnoy trying to do the exact same thing, trying to get a base hit off of Brazereke, fighting off these pitches until he could put that ball into play as a payoff pitch. And Vodnoy wins the battle. It results in a fly ball deep to right center field. And the throw is going to go to second instead. He thought about going to first to see if they could double up Sanchez. And what an A-B. Vodnoy able to induce 11 pitches. Jeez, 11 pitches. You think that was enough? Information for Ashton Lewis. Watnoy giving him all the information. And he's going to bring that back to the dugout and let everybody know. This is what we should expect from Brazereke. So with two gone, it'll bring up Ashton Lewis. A little outside, ball one. Here comes the 2-0. Lewis will foul that one off. Two one. Good spot there for Brazereke. Just one pitch away from getting out of this one and allow Santa Cruz to play catch up with their last three outs. As the 2 2. Nice take there from Lewis. Not a guy that swings for pitches out of the zone. Toss will go to first instead of the mound. It'll be interesting to see what pitch Braze Reke will go with here to toss to Ashton Lewis. And will Lewis let it go by or swing as the payoff pitch? Let's that one go upstairs, ball four.
with two out walks. Can be absolutely deadly and Brazereke just made it runners on first and second. First pitch to Valdivia, pitch in the dirt, and that's gonna get away. As Turvey, all he can really do is just pick up the ball and see if decide to try to take home as well. So now run number four, just 90 feet away, that would help with insurance runs here for Sierra Madre. If you can increase this lead for Sierra Madre, now is definitely the time. So pressure here for Turvey along with Braze Reque. And that's a line drive over the glove of Elliott Smith. One run comes in to score. Two runs comes in to score. The insurance runs are able to make it a three-run game. And this one is going to hurt here for Santa Cruz. The game has been close. The whole entire time. Do five and two thirds to be exact, and it's Ryan Valdivia comes up with a two out, two RBI single. And now it's Andrew Cooper who will look to extend this inning. And Cooper finds a way through. That'll reach the left field wall, and Valdivia is going to go first to third, and he's going to go back to third. And a bit of this two out rally going on now for Sierra Madre. So now Braze Oreke. Maybe it for him as Brad Smith coming out to the mound. And that will be it here for Braze Reque. As he was only able to get a K, but not fully get out of this inning. And we may see Matt Casper, who will be on the mound. So it's a 5-2. So Matt Casper having to come on the mound and take care of the last third of this sixth inning. So Jake Smith is in the box. Runners on second and third, looking to add more to this lead. Ball two. And the question is, will they stick with Jake Smith on the mound for the seventh. I mean, he has dealt with only those two earned runs all game long. And Smith with a drive over to center field, and that's over the head of Hunter Denworth. As one run will come in to score, make it two, and another, another two RBI hit for Jake Smith. A new score of seven to two, a five run lead. So Connor McKinney there in the box with a strike on his count. 
this has gone from a save situation to now just collecting the three outs. Three outs away from the championship game, which will be 30 minutes after this one. Two strike pitch, line drive grabbed there by Skinner, and that will end the threat. But five runs, five hits, no errors, and one runner left on base. Fasten your seatbelts here, folks. Seven to two lead, last hopes here for Santa Cruz. Last hopes for Santa Cruz. They will throw out Dodrill, Turvey, and possibly Duran here in the top of the seventh inning. It'll stay as Jake Smith. And this is his inning to pitch. He's got plenty of pitches left before he gets to the 95 pitch count. One and two the count here to Dodrill. So going into this inning, he had a total of 20 left. Definitely going to need him to complete this game. And the one-two pitch, that one just below the knees. Two and two. Smith on the wind, here it comes. And Dodrill just able to fight that one off. <laughs> Got to be the pitcher's pitch as the 2-2. Line drive. That'll drop into right field for a hit. And Dodrill, some loud contact off of the bat, just turning on one, sending it to right field. So a six pitch at bat there for Nathan Dodrill. Here is you win Turby. Turby going from third to catcher in the middle of the game. Switching places with Skinner who was behind the plate at the start of the game. And for most of it, it was Skinner from behind the plate. As the 1 0, -oh, that's a miss upstairs. Got to start finding the strike zone here. And if you're Smith, like I mentioned, this is your inning. And this is for you to come up with the CG, the complete game. You have to make Coach Vaudenoy start warming someone up or make a pitching change here in the seventh inning with pitch counts being the issue. Here's a 3-0. Three, oh. three and one. And there's a drive over to left field, but there's a man, Ryan Valdivia, able to make the grab. With some loud contact by you win Turvey, one gone. They will go back to Roman Duran. Could be one ground ball away from finishing this one. Strike call at the letters. A one, catching the corner, strike two. So last six pitches now for Smith. Really squeezing everything out of him. That's a two strike pitch, catching the outer edge of the plate. Strike three call and another one bites the dust.
That's 11 Ks. 11 Ks through six and two thirds. And Coach Varnoy hasn't made a gesture at all for a change, but I mean, he is getting the pat of the back by his shipmates. But no gesture of a change, and he's asking him, how are you feeling? You think you can get this last guy? Five pitches left. Who will he face off against? Should be Avier Brazereke. Right, so here we go. Two outs. Top of the seventh inning. A 7-2 ball game. One out away for Sierra Madre to punch their tickets to the 2024 14U Pony West Zone Tournament Championship. A pitch will miss low. Ball one. So this is your guy to get here if you're Smith. And Coach Vaudenoy definitely telling Smith, hey, I know you got this. So there's a ground ball, too short, bobbled. And Brazereke puts the ball in play and good things happen. They will remain with Smith and use every pitch that he's got as the very first pitch here. And there's a line drive that'll sneak through to left field. They're going to put the stop sign on the lead runner, Dodrill, and the bases will be juiced here, setting things up for the top of the lineup in Hunter Denworth. This inning has just gotten pretty interesting now. Smith will pitch to Denworth. First pitch, Denworth goes after one, strike one. That was pitch number 94. One and one. Jake Smith catching the outer half of the plate. Strike two, down to the last strike. Here comes the pitch. Line drive, bangs to left field. Dodrill will come in to score. They'll play it station to station. It's a 7-3 game, and now Coach Vaudenoy has to take Smith out of the game. That'll force an arm to come out of the pen. Now have to look for this last out of the game, but what a performance here from Smith going those Six and two thirds innings with 11 Ks. It's down to the last out. And now it's Elliot Smith who will be swinging away against Nick Adams. It's an inside ball one. With it being a 7-3 ball game, bases juiced, Elliott represented as the tying run at the plate. So one strike pitch, and that's going to get by. As Brace Reiki will stay. Ball two on that pitch. Well, the top four hitters here for Santa Cruz have all gone over and a whole lot of Ks. That's where most of the Ks came 
here for Jake Smith. And the 1 0, -oh, 2 up and in. Three balls. So 11 K is for Jake Smith. As the 2 0. -oh. Right there for strike one. So three one pitch, a low miss. It'll be a two out RBI walk. So now Sierra Madre struggling to find this last out. And making this game very close and interesting. So now the pass of baton to Anthony Skinner. And Adams, he's going to need to locate his pitches. Breaking ball, that's through. The new runner on third is Liam Fields Ropley. And there's no need to run into an out there at the plate. Just allow Anthony Skinner to swing away in this big situation. Ball two. There is some movement here in the Sierra Madre pen. That walk makes it into a three-run game. A Skinner with a high fly ball over to right center field. That's over the fence. It's a ball. Basso. Allowed by Tasso off the bat of Anthony Skinner. Give the man the MVP title. They have just taken the lead here in the seventh inning and all of Sierra Madre absolutely stunned at what they have just experienced. Fortunately, due to the poor pitching here for Sierra Madre in the seventh inning, they gave hopes to Santa Clara, or Santa Cruz, excuse me, and being able to come from behind. They were losing by five. Now they're winning by one. That's what happens when you start walking guys. You walk guys with two outs. Those are momentum killers. That's essentially enough to really kill the lead that you have. Never walk a guy, a lead off batter, or never walk a guy with two outs. Essentially it's exactly what Jake Smith did and exactly what Nick Adams did. As the 0-2, slow roller to George. There is McKinney, and McKinney is going to put him away. So here we go. We will have a bottom of the seventh inning with Sierra Madre. Now they'll be fighting for their deal life. So bottom seven. And now this game has completely taken a sideways turn. And Santa Cruz, now they'll be looking to shut the door in the seventh. And they'll go up against Blake, Barrera, and either Sanchez or Villalobos, of course, depending on what the situation is for them, as Matt Casper, with only delivering five pitches in that sixth inning, it'll be him that's up at the plate. It's a one-strike pitch, can keep that one low. 
One and one. Asper on this big closing situation. That essentially gets a piece of, of Blake. Getting a piece of that little ear flap and Blake represented as a tying run. So now Julian Barrera with an opportunity who is sitting 0 for 3. Now would be the best time for him to get a base hit. Barrera fouling one up upstairs, a little piñata action. Saw a breaking ball up. It was off of the plate and tried to barrel up on it. Toss over to first. Yo one, Barrera popping this one up. This one could be playable. And coming in on the run, no play. Turvey should have left that one up to Duran, who is playing over there at first for Casper. There's two strikes on the count to Barrera now, and now you're hoping that this second life to Barrera doesn't bite them in the rear end. Barrera going to be granted time. Casper's 0-2, breaking ball, good work for Turvey. Pressure on Turvey just as much as pitcher Casper. Other pitch in the dirt, Turvey. Able to get the leather on the ball. Staying up ahead of that one, two and two to JB9. Two, two. Catching the inner half of the plate, strike three call. So Barrera going down on strikes in back to back plate appearances. For Santa Cruz, not a lot of Ks today. But they've definitely created a whole lot of weak contact and running into some outs. That's with one away. This will be Sanchez that'll be at the plate. Oh no, nice spot at the knees. Gotta keep those pitches at around knee level. Lower half of the plate. You wanna be throwing pitches that they're not gonna be able to do a whole lot of damage with. That is a good spot for Casper to live. 
The one one. This one's popped up. Skinner looking in to see if he has a play. And runs out of room. It looked more like a play for Turvey than it did for, for Skinner. One, two, late swing by Sanchez. Got in the middle of swinging or just leaving it. A very awkward swing there for Sanchez. And it's down to the last out for, for Jeffrey Varnoy. And Varnoy with a shallow fly ball to center field. And they, instead of risking a play, they will go ahead and trap the ball. And that will allow Blake to advance into scoring position. Sierra Madre, they'll manage to pass the baton over to Ashton Lewis. Who has been putting great quality at bats the last three trips. Shies away from that one. Oh, one and oh. Just a reminder, 30 minutes at the end of this one. We will have the championship game, Long Beach Hartwell, waiting for the winner of this one. One and one the count. And so Santa Cruz just one out away from being able to get themselves from the losing brackets to the winning brackets, then to the championship game. One, one, called strike two, and now one last life, one last strike for Sierra Madre. The one, two, Lewis thought about it. Really haven't taken one pitch at a time here against Casper and Lewis. 2-2, Two -two. ground ball, that's fair. They're gonna keep the runner there and the throw at the plate, not in time. Adol! So another brand new ball game and Matt Casper with a blown save. Can't shut the door here on Sierra Madre. So Santa Cruz, they were able to cash in six to make them an eight seven lead to enforce the bottom of the seventh. And now it's Sierra Madre scoring here. Making it eight all, but this game's still not over. As here's a bouncer over to third. Goes into left field. They'll give the stop sign, though. Don't want to run into an out for Varnoy. So every base currently occupied for Sierra Madre. Now it's up to the three hitter, Andrew Cooper. Two doubles here in this game. 
The winning run is on third. Here it comes. Now on little low, strike one. This game could be finished on a wild pitch. So Vagnoi got to be taking his lead on his toes. As Cooper drops it in. So Sierra Madre, they win in the dramatics. They drop the five run lead. They come back, tie it up, and Andrew Cooper able to get one to drive to right field and walks it off to cash in Vod Noy. So the stage is set here for the championship game. It is Long Beach Hartwell and Sierra Madre, the two teams who stayed on the winning bracket the longest, they have a date with each other. And what a way to end it here for Santa Cruz. I mean, they finished up with a bang, finished it out with a fight. They, take, they took the lead, tie game. They would try to take the lead again, tie game. They would tie it up themselves. But unfortunately, it would end with Sierra Madre winning it in the home half of the seventh. It's a big tip of the cap here to Santa Cruz. Family, team, supporters, you name it. Everybody that made it out here to Southern California to make it out to the trip. Even coaching staff here for Santa Cruz. And again, a tip of the cap for them to fight from the losing bracket all the way here. Just one game away, literally one out away from making it to the championship game. Well, on behalf of our production crew, I am Alex Nebeka, Mike Nagiri as the producer. And the final score of nine to eight, and Sierra Madre versus Long Beach. We'll see you guys in 30 minutes. Alex Nebeka saying, when I started this, and for now, until the championship game, good job to Santa Cruz.